Okay, good afternoon. Hi there, everyone, and thank you for attending this event. I am Jesus Meirinho, and I work at the Universidad de Vigo in Spain. In this talk, my colleague Hayley Dawson from the University of Roehampton and I will be giving you an overview of the main steps followed to produce IO6. This intellectual output, entitled, as you can see on screen, Quality Assessment of the New Material and Progress Recommendations for ILSA, ran from May, May 2019 to May 2020. The work carried out was based on the results stemming from the previous three IOs. IO3, Profile Definition and Competences of the Professional ILSA, IO4, Mapping the New ILSA Course, and IO5, Development of Training Material for the New ILSA Course. The aim of this intellectual output was to test and check the appropriateness and quality of the course design and course materials. As listed on screen, the main aim can be broken down further into a few specific objectives. First, to evaluate participants' performance in life subtitling before taking the ILSA course. Second, to assess participants' performance and knowledge after taking the course. And finally, this intellectual output also aimed to evaluate the materials used in different modules of the course. Thus, the output was a report on how the professional profile sketched in IO3, the course design created in IO4, and the training materials elaborated in IO5 can be updated and improved. This report will be available online via the ILSA website shortly. The work carried out in IO6 went through two stages, summative assessment and formative assessment. The summative assessment followed a pre-test, post-test design. For formative assessment, the course was designed progressively and testing of the content was carried out for each module as they were being designed. Before the ILSA course was developed, two pre-tests were carried out to test potential course material that could be included in the ILSA course. Once the material had been deemed suitable for interlingual re-speaking training, it was included within the ILSA course, and a post-test was carried out to test whether the material was effective to train students in interlingual re-speaking. For this, the data includes performance analysis and students' feedback on the materials. Now, my colleague Hayley Dawson will focus on the pre-test part of the summative assessment stage. Thank you, Jesus. So, yes, as we just said, the uh, summative assessment followed a pre-test, post-test uh, design. Two pre-tests were carried out. So for the first one, empirical research was carried out to identify the task-specific skills required for interlingual re-speaking. First, a pilot experiment with eight participants tested how they would perform with very little training of only three hours with potential material for the ILSA course, which was some two, uh, which was some short two minute video clips. The videos turned out to be suitable for interlingual re-speaking practice. Participants' overall average accuracy rate was 97.35%, which is a three out of 10. And for some context on that, an accuracy rate of 98%, which is a 5 out of 10, is considered suitable for broadcast. Off the back of the pilot study, a main study was carried out. 44 participants of subtitling and interpreting backgrounds received three weeks of training in dictation, intra and interlingual speaking before carrying out a test. So for this training, potential material for the ILSA course, such as source text videos and tasks, were used. For intralingual re-speaking, participants achieved an average accuracy rate of 98.24%, which is a 5.5 .5 out of 10. And for interlingual, 97.36%, which is a 3 out of 10. So these results show that the material being used uh, could be effective for interlingual re-speaking training. For the second pretest, seven trainees took an online interlingual speaking course delivered by the University of Vigo last year. Potential materials for the ILSA course were used for this training as well. 
Trainees were provided with uh, readings on respeaking different genres of television, source video material to respeak from sports, news, weather, speeches and interviews. And trainees also carried out a self-assessment each week with the NTR model, which gave them insight into the translation and recognition errors that can be made by an interlingual speaker. And as Pablo mentioned in his presentation earlier, a longer course and more substantial uh, course material allowed trainees to, to perform better and, and reach uh, higher accuracy rates. They reached higher uh, accuracy rates with uh, average, averages of 99.5% in intralingual respeaking and 98% in interlingual respeaking. And in interlingual respeaking, some trainees even reached 99% when respeaking sports and speeches. So I'll pass you back to Jesus now for some more on the summative assessment. Thanks, Hayley. Once the suitable course material had been included in the ILSA course, 22 MA students participated in a post-test. They completed an interlingual re-speaking test, Spanish-English, and their performance was assessed with the NTR model. Accuracy rates ranged from 94.1% which is a 0 out of 10, to 99.4%, which is an 8 out of 10. The average accuracy rate was 97.78%, which is a 4 out of 10. Now, let's move on to talk about the actual data. With regards to the formative assessment, the data was gathered from the feedback received from 22 MA students who had the opportunity to take the different modules of the ILSA course as they were being elaborated under the guidance of the ILSA project members. You can see on screen a summary of the comments received. Some strong points were mentioned, in particular the selection of materials, the high quality of the video tutorials, together with their clarity and the structure of the whole course. As for areas, of need, sorry, as for areas in need of improvement, on the one hand, some participants flagged the lack of information about live subtitling in Spanish-speaking countries. On the other hand, the extension of a couple of units, as well as the existence of some repetition throughout, was also noted. Also, participants referred to the need to practice to be able to successfully use the software mentioned in the few units. They also reported a few minor technical defects. Regardless, the feedback received was highly positive as you will see on the report that is to be uploaded to the ILSA website. Finally, Haley will talk about some recommendations regarding training in re-speaking. Thank you, Jesus. So the formative and summative assessment have shed light on some recommendations for interlingual re-speaking training. So first of all, those who achieved good accuracy rates experienced minimal technical issues and dictated clearly with good volume and at a steady pace. And this shows that extensive dictation and software practice is needed to reduce recognition errors, which could also allow strong live translators to not underperform due to poor recognition. So a focus on dictation and software management is required in the initial stages of training. Top performers in interlingual re-speaking also performed, sorry, top performers in intralingual re-speaking performed well in interlingual re-speaking. And this indicates that it may be necessary for training to start with intralingual re-speaking before adding the extra complexity of language transfer. And we know that interlingual re-speaking is a complex task with many layers. Respeaking practice could be based around the five tasks involved in that. So listening to the source, respeaking the target text, monitoring the output, watching the images on screen, and finally correcting the target text. Trainees could be asked to add a step for each exercise they complete so that they can progressively work up to the full respeaking task. And audiovisual materials uh, should cover genres, topics and speech rates, introducing videos with easy content, uh, a low speech rate and long pauses would allow trainees to listen and speak at the same time, and increasing speech rates, content difficulty and density with each exercise 
to give trainees a sense of progression, as Pablo also mentioned in his uh, presentation earlier. And this would allow them to minimise recognition errors, which are far easier to tackle than translation errors are. Um, it's also advantageous for tasks to include an element of quality assessment. I need to self-assess uh, their bespoken output with the MTR model or to focus on uh, sort of one type of translation error uh, per exercise. So they're the, the recommendations for training. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Hayley and Jesus. All right, let's have a look at the chat box. Uh, yes, we have already a first question there. Uh, were the trainee students or professionals? I so in the, uh, there were three experiments that I mentioned. The first one in the pilot experiment, they were students, MA students. In the main experiment, the second one I mentioned, they were also students, uh, mostly MA students um, that had just completed or were still doing their MA. And the last experiment that I mentioned, where they achieved the higher accuracy rates and they had longer training, they were the trainees were professionals. They were either subtitlers, simultaneous interpreters, or intralingual re-speakers. All right, thank you. There is a next question. How many weeks lasted the course and how many sessions were included? So in the UVigo course, um, there were, it lasted for a total of 16 weeks, no sorry, 18 weeks. Um, there was a module, an eight-week module on simultaneous interpreting, then an eight-week module on intralingual re-speaking, and they, those two modules ran simultaneously. And then for another eight weeks, uh, there was a module on interlingual re-speaking. And in between these modules, there was a week of uh, like a feedback week as well. So 18 weeks in total. Okay. Oh, just in, sorry, how many sessions were included? Um, the, so the UVigo course was delivered on um, all of the material. Material was uploaded on a weekly basis and trainees had that week to work through the material and then submit it before the next uh, batch of material was released, let's say. So there weren't any sort of a number of sessions per se, but there was a topic per week. Um, so we would look at dictation practice um, and then perhaps re-speaking speeches and then re-speaking sport and then quality assessment. Um, so there was a topic uh, each week was, was dedicated to a, a topic. Uh, 